In one of the D-Class amplifier review videos, someone in the comments suggested to take an amplifier on TPA3255 chip for review. It costs around 50 bucks, which is a bit expensive for a review product, but one of my friends wanted to know what a powerful D-Class amplifier is and whether it can deliver at least half of the claimed power. And the claim there is as much as 300 watts per channel on a 4 ohm load. The double-sided printed circuit board is generally made quite well. The only thing is that there is some scratch in one place. It's as if there were sticky tracks that were subsequently cut with a knife. Just in case I checked, there is no contact between the tracks so you can use it. Good quality connectors for connecting the speakers. The same for connecting the power supply, which here is unipolar, which is also an advantage of this amplifier. A unipolar power supply is much easier to find. Both channels operate in bridge mode, with a choke and capacitor on each wire. The TPA3255 can also be double bridged to get 600 watts on a 2 ohm load. Two large 63 volt electrolytes with a capacitance of 4700 UF. At the input are two TL0072 operational amplifiers. Their outputs apparently through capacitors are connected to the inputs of the TPA. There are small complaints about the quality of assembly. These chips can break off, fall somewhere on the board and short circuit something that doesn't need to be shorted. In the corner of the board, LM2576 chip is modestly hidden. It is a pulse step-down voltage converter. It is a 3.3 volt stabilizer. Incorrect capacitor, as you can see that the place here is for surface mount capacitor installation and soldered ordinary electrolyte for through installation on the board. There are also two LED indicators. As if there is nothing more to tell about the board, let's remove the heatsink, check if there is thermal paste there, and take a look at this super powerful chip. There is thermal paste. At the contact of the heatsink with the chip, the excess was squeezed out of the contact boundaries. And we see this very small chip, now I'll try to find the labeling. Yes, it's the 3255 and I can't even believe that it is capable of delivering 300 watts per channel and the total is 600 watts. The small heatsink measures 31 by 60 millimeters and it's 21 millimeters high. How it will dissipate that much power, I don't know. Even with a D-class efficiency of around 90%, we will have about 60 watts of heat generated. And this heat sink is clearly not enough. Now let's go through the data sheet a little bit. On the first page we have some nice numbers with the power output claim. 315 watts dirty at 4 ohms, 185 at 8 ohms, and 600 watts in double bridge mode. Net power is more modest, but still. 260 watts into 4 ohms of pure sine. Agree that for an amplifier with unipolar power supply of 50 volts, this is a very good application. Then there's the signal to noise ratio, 90% efficiency, and a supply voltage range of 18 to 53 volts. I won't dwell on all the parameters of the chip, you can find the datasheet yourself and read it in detail. The main thing I'm interested in is what power the amplifier will produce at 48 volts, because that's the power supply we have. We find the necessary graphs and see that the dirty 160 watts in 8 ohms and 280 in 4 ohms. The clean ones are about 130 and 230 watts. Let's remember this and compare it when measuring. Then again, charts, 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 block diagram of the chip. Diagram with connection in stereo mode and mono mode. More graphs, more diagrams. In general, the datasheet is very detailed. And by the way, 
Frequency of operation 450 kilohertz, unlike other D classes, there was, and 70 kilohertz. That is, here we and you will definitely not hear it. Let's move on to the measurements. And now the most interesting and possibly some action begins. First we'll load it channel by channel. One channel is 8 ohms, the other 4 ohms. And if nothing burns out, I'll load two channels at once. The power supply is 48 volts and 20 amps. Also connected oscilloscope on which we will watch the ripple. And the thermocouple is attached to the heat sink to measure temperature. I'm applying power, the red indicator light comes on. Ripples without signal, 1.26 volts at 460 kilohertz. This is the carrier frequency of the TPA3255 operation. Again, you won't hear it as the human ear can't hear sounds of such high frequency. I start to add gain smoothly. And you can clearly see how the sine wave of the carrier frequency is superimposed on the audio signal. RMS value is 32 volts. The radiator has warmed up a little bit. And we have 128 watts of output power. This is pure power, without distortion. And with distortion, 185 watts. Let's compare it to the data sheet. 150 watts into 8 ohms without distortion, 180 watts with 10% distortion. But the data sheet says 50 volts. We have, I remind you, 48 volts. I now switch the oscilloscope probe to a 4 ohm load, also switch the input and see what it shows at 4 ohms. The red multimeter will show the supply voltage. I add gain 29.6 volts with no distortion and 34 volts with distortion. Heatsink temperature is 55 degrees Celsius. There's no sag in the power supply. Everything's fine. Let's do the math. Round 29.6 to 30 volts. Divide by the resistance and we get 225 watts. The manufacturer's claim is 260 watts at 50 volts, which is important. Now the power with distortion. 299 watts. The data sheet says 315 watts. Now let's load both channels at full power and see if the TPA3255 chip burns out. I'm turning the power up to distortion. Everything's fine. Now I'm going to set the voltage at 20 volts. That equals 100 watts of power. The temperature on the heatsink continues to rise. I turn it off at 65 degrees. And it turns out that this amplifier delivers the power declared, but because of the small heatsink at this power, it will not be possible to listen to it for a long time. It will overheat and the chip will fail. And we'll listen to him for a while. Let's go. 
go outside, the snow is falling down And every child is having so much fun A snowman is twice the size as me With a smile as quirky as mine We're holding hands to keep each other warm While we stand and watch a quiet Let me give you a Christmas A moment we'll fill with love and joy Mm-mm, so beautiful Kissing on a mistletoe spirit Let's summarize. It's not the best amplifier I've ever listened to. I like the ice power better, for example. It sounds more pleasant. But there was a power of 50 watts per channel, and this amplifier has 150 watts, which is three times more. And of course, the cost of ice power amplifier is higher. But it's much better than other cheap Chinese amps for 10 to 20 dollars. But I have a tube amp. And it sounds much better than this TPA3255. You can find the link to the amp in the description of this video. Thanks for watching this video. Good luck.